Howdy, folks. Welcome back to the channel. I've got my friend Jeeves with me. And what's up? I, had to, I had to reach out. You know, what's up? I had to reach out to my friend in Hawaii. He's so laid back. He's got such a great attitude. And there's so much angst in the world today around AI music generation tools. And I'm getting some scary, depressing comments in my video feed. And thank you all for commenting. But I'm concerned that some folks are taking this a little too seriously and having unusually negative responses. And I thought Jeeves can chill me out. He can help me bring me the frame the perspective back where it needs to be uh, and, and show that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So I put a video out a couple of days ago kind of talking about, you know, the good and the bad of AI. And I think things are going to be great in the big picture. I want to do more of that. Uh, again, this is largely motivated by Christian Henson at uh, Crow Hill Company, his video about how he thinks the, the pendulum will swing towards the good and there'll be a longing, a, re, a, a desire to return to virtuosity. I like to call it seeking authenticity. Um, we Some folks will say that maybe AI tools are causing a glut of average or poor or bland or soulless music. I generally disagree with that concept, but I'm going to run with that as the, the basis that most of these opinions are being uh, founded upon, that the market's getting saturated and... The quality of music continues to go down, and people are, are sad about that. Jeeves, let's talk about about the saturation of the market in the first place. Do you think that our market, our music market, the music industry today, is already saturated with average to bad music? Is can it get worse? What are your what's your thoughts on that? I think, I mean, even before the AI thing popping up, yeah, I think we're heavily saturated with all kinds of music, good, bad, even phenomenal music. I have a, I have a show on Twitch where hundreds of people come by and I spin a wheel and they put their name in there in songs. And I'm listening to music from around the world, rock bands, jazz, fusion, video games, OST movies that I had no idea existed that were phenomenal. Mm. It has 350 views, 800 views, you know, nine subscribers. And the, the truth be told, to, to, to kind of keep it close to your question about the saturation, there is a mind numbing amount of music being released every day without AI. So the saturation of the industry as a whole and trying to, you know, grab the ear of a listener for, you know, you're in it to a minute to win it. I mean, pop culture um uh music writing under the auspice of how radio used to engage in it you had to be into the hook by a minute you only had three and a half minutes get the hook in there a couple times you know that whole thing that ear that still is kind of true but now you instead of having a minute to get to the hook you better get something really catchy into somebody's ear because of doom scrolling within about 15 seconds so true. the whole nature of constructing music the availability, <laughs> excuse me, the availability of technology, and I'm not even talking AI, I'm talking about uh, digital audio workstations that comes with bundles and loops and all kinds of stuff where even the most, all right, I don't know how to do this, I have a one octave, you know, uh, USB keyboard or something, and I'm doing this and I'm having a great time at some pretty decent quality, um, is putting stuff out there. So the, the challenge and that saturation aspect was there before AI. So you know, I, I, AI generative uh, generated music, though, right now, I still only see it as a novelty. Um, so we've already discussed quality and all that. And yes, that will change and all that. But um, I, I, I don't see it yet impacting um, the industry in a way that nervous composers, songwriters, producers, engineers, musicians are getting as much as it is now is that the beast, the, the, they released the musical Kraken. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Now, now YouTube and Spotify are now getting crushed with AI artists um, who are popping up the stuff, pulling revs. And now they're trying to figure out a way how to separate that before there is a universal pushback on both platforms. And, and I have an opinion about that, but I, I want to kind of stick close to your, 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 um, your, your question, which the market was already oversaturated. I think the market is saturated but the tools, including AI, give more people a chance to create valuable, useful, emotional, real good content uh, if we choose to embrace it instead of grab our pitchforks and torches and try to destroy the tool. 
In my only in my experience through my journey in, in music is that um, there's a subjective baseline of what is good bad music. I think mm. uh, one of the things that I I my per, myself don't you know when I watch Rick Beato and people say music it sucks it changes now it hasn't have enough chords in it and stuff like this and sure there's a big change in that. Um, what it is that the new composers and songwriters are being influenced by and then in them themselves, you know, putting it out there uh, might only have two chords. I mean, there was that one Adele song that's just uh, what is it? It's uh, it's a D6 and a C6. I think it was. I'm, I'm not too sure the whole song. But what was a great lesson in that is how many different ways can you utilize building arrangements for that? It's just yep. two chords in a song, you know, but to kind of put this on a on a on a freight train here. What I think AI, Suno, and what's the other one? Udio, I think Udio, it's called. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think what's going to happen here is something that I've just started working on for myself for kicks. I'm saying, okay, there's this conversation happening with producers, musicians, composers, arrangers, so on and so forth. This is an internal circle jerk conversation, I like to call it. It's us. It's like when I used to sit with engineers and we used to go, oh, how did they use that compression on the Oh, and all this stuff. And we could sit there and just piss and moan about how did that even make that cut or how did that side get on the album or that's the worst compression ever. Can you hear the tape saturation? <laughs> Who yeah. gives an F? You know what I'm saying? Right. It's a, it's a conversation for us to have. That's fine. The public doesn't understand any of that. They just want to hear the music and they go. Where I think AI music at the moment, where composers need to kind of maybe sit back and just take a breather, just, just relax, is that it's not going to take work away from you. It's going to make you a better composer, producer, arranger, musician, okay? Because the people who would be using AI music creation right now and stuff are people that are just, it's, it's a novelty at the moment. Yeah, thousands of tracks, but I, I was coming up with something going, well, who would want to use that, those tools? I go, well, what if I was a lyricist and I don't have money to hire anybody and I don't have this and, and I just have these lyrics I've written for years or I've got a stack of lyrics I couldn't have done anything with. And then that lyricist goes and works out the kinks in, the, in the, either one of those two. And then all of a sudden, for what it's worth, this, this lyricist now actually has a body, a small body of work that they've put out because it's still going to sound kind of off. It's not going to have a powerful hook. It's not going to, you know, sometimes it does. I'm, you know, having fun. And the other thing that I was thinking, I'm going, because, you know, I'm a children's entertainer on the side right. and stuff I do for kids. I'm going, I, I, wanted to I wanted to test this to boil it down to the ridiculous. I went on to ChatGTP and I put in a prompt, spit me out a nursery rhyme about one, two, three, four, and five, and how they all get along as friends. It was about six paragraphs. Then I took that and I copied and pasted it and I put it into uh, what, uh, Suno. And I said, reggae, acoustic, uh, uh, ukulele, something like that. Had to clean up the paragraphs a little bit. And it spit out a really fun track. Now, where I was going to go with this is that what if you're a teacher? I think there isn't one person that can't say they don't remember something from a nursery rhyme that they sung, right? Yeah. So what if a teacher now decides that he, she, he or she wants to teach their class uh, about being friends, about doing things, but they have a very unique way about it, or maybe because of where they are in a certain part of town or city or something, and it's a right. small town in, in Alaska, and they have salmon, and they have a Kodiak bear, and they have this, and he goes, let's write a happy song about the salmon and the bear and something get along, and it spits this out, and those teachers are able to use that with a lesson. Yeah. To me, that's the power of AI and what I believe it can be used for. Now, I know some people say, well, they, they should hire a composer to do that music. Well, sure, they should back, get, you know, before the Last Supper when that was the only way that you would get things done. But they don't have that money. It's just like the people who I mentioned in the last podcast that might use AI might be those really small regional radio stations or TV stations that might use either one of those two to write a 30 second um, jingle. Now, I've tried to do that a couple times, and right now, I haven't figured out yet a way to say, to prompt in 30 seconds, you know, at a hard stop of 30 and be able to do this right. and the other thing. Probably in a couple of years, we'll get to that point. But once again, those prompts, those individuals are not taken away from the composer's ability to write and make music. Remember, this is right now where this is. Anybody who's using this and is going to take it and put it on a professional platform to try to make money, you're going to be the ones that are just going to come up with fake artists for a minute. 
you know, a little bim boom bomb with a, uh, you know, um, uh, video generated stuff and whatever. Sure, they might get something for a minute, but it, it, you know, maybe makes them a little bit of money. There was that one story about that guy on Spotify that has made hundreds of thousands of dollars by generating AI music and putting it on there. But now, now that guy was outed and it's a big thing and Spotify just went into labor. They just got all dilated and stuff because <laughs> that hurt their image. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the imagination, theater of the mind. And the same thing with YouTube. YouTube now is having to struggle with um, the same kind of challenges, but in a completely different way. But the saturation aspect, here's what I believe. Now I'm going to get a little, a little, little spongy here, a little thick. What I believe AI is going to do in, in the creative world that's going to benefit us is, well, it depends on how one feels about this. It's just my, I sit on an island, I have time, I think. This is what I come up with. Is that we are about to get so intensely flooded with AI generated videos and speaking and all this stuff, AI generated, let's say, music and artists, that it's gonna cause people to pull back from social media. I predict mm. that AI is gonna crush social media as a whole because nobody will be able to trust it. Mm. Maybe grandma cooking lasagna, or how did I make that, you know, spam musubi, <laughs> or yeah. something like that. But I think it's gonna cause uh, even like 50 times more of the mistrust and the from the anxiety of the kind of stuff that's posting now when it comes to youtube if it doesn't bleed it doesn't read so they're 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 weaponizing people to create dark and negative videos etc cetera, etc cetera, so they can get their ad revs because people are tripping out right now about the world well because of that but at the same token take that same energy put it into suno or uh udio once again we're not going to trust anything. We're not going to know who's so who's what what's going on here. Even if even if the sounds get better, which they will, I believe it's going to cause the camp what I call the campfire complex. Hmm. People want to get around and just get 50 people in the club and just listen to some music and have some you know human interaction. And this is where I believe if anybody's tripping and wanting to let's say not do music anymore because AI is going to replace replace that. No, this is your time to grow. Yeah, this is your time to get out there and this is your time to to see what's going on in the world of marketing, which I had to play around with it a little bit. One of the first things I ever did was research my competitor. What are they doing? How are they doing it? Why are they successful? Who's reacting to it? Why are they reacting it? Read the comments. Oh, my God. La, 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 la. And then I'd go and find a way to probably grab a part of a market share. This was just some old fun stuff I used to do in the past. In this case the homework is done for us. We know what the AI sounds like currently. It sounds like crap for now. It's getting better, a little better. And, and it does kind of blow me away. I'm like going, okay. Um, and it will get better. But I think what it will do is motivate musicians and composers and producers and engineers to become more than what they are if they're concerned about the output of AI. I'm not concerned. I could care less. I just got through doing four major let's just say um, custom production cues for a, a major Apple TV show that needed a hurry up license and they couldn't get it across. And so because of my skill set, I had to write four pieces of work that were four completely different things and have a, like a seven hour turnaround. Wow. So there's still work to be had, but what this does is it forces you to be more involved in the work, expand your genres, expand what you're doing. Not if, if you, if you only have a small block and you say, well, I only do hip hop EDM and stuff. Okay. That's fine. Expand, get better, get wider. Because what I had said before, the one thing that these two websites cannot do is say, okay, in bar 27 from 27 to 33, I know that's an odd number from 27 to 33, cause it's in seven, eight, from <laughs> 27 to 33, I want to hear an arpeggiation of a high end, uh, kind of like a, a sine wave bells kind of going at a They can't do that. Nope. You know, they, they can't do that. We can do that. They can't. You know, so I, I know I just went on about a 10 minute run on this, but I don't see AI being as destructive, I think, as people who are running around saying, you know, NEM, it's a twister, there's locusts and falling frogs, it's going to be all over, you know, I think there's going to be big change. 
change has always happened. I was thinking before we went on, I said, you know, do you remember in the 40s, in the 50s, there used to be the typing pools? Mm. You know, 500 ladies typing in an area because they had to do it. Well, the typing pools ended, but the ones who still continued to go on were the ones who were in the typing pools that learned how to use a computer and do that. And then they learned how to do this and they learned how to progress. And kind of like what your dad did, kind of like what my dad did, move, 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 move. And in this case, also, how do you know you don't get influenced by dropping something into AI? What if, you, what, what if we don't flip the script? I'm having a hard time thinking of something. Well, let me put this in there. And all of a sudden, it chugs out something. Chugs, chugs, you know, metalcore. And all of a sudden, you go, hey, I'm just, I was just influenced by the SAI track. It sucks, but now I'm going to work something around it. And now you produce something. You know, Some people will say, well, that's not creative. It didn't come from your head. Well, I'll challenge anybody on that because anybody who's creative has been influenced by somebody that is exactly. renting space in your creative head and you're jump, you know, you're standing on the shoulders of giants. You know, whatever your influences are, you know you're pulling from your influences. Even if it's a school teacher from eighth grade from like jazz band way back in the 1900s when they used to give a shit about that in public schools. And or now if you're listening to, you know, Beyond the Buried and Me and 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 Mushuga and or whatever and you're still getting influenced, right? So this little thing that I just whipped up that was an ukulele, reggae, beach vibes with drums and bass and something on soon I was listening to it, I was going, hey, that's kind of a nice little jam. If I, if I gave a crap, I could sit there and go, hmm, I like those chord changes. That was fun. That's an A, that's an a major, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I think what I'm going to do, because it sounds like crap, I'm going to just take the basics of that. I'm going to play it in there. I'm going to add my piano arrangement, and I'm going to add some strings, and I'm going to add my own vocals and all that, but slightly influenced by it. You know, sometimes we got to play with the toys. One of the most important things that happened to my creation in my creative career is when I bought it. it this is such a close parallel, is when I would spend 2,500 bu bucks and buy a brand new Korg module or... Uh, Fairlighter or, or or Kurzweil module, and then I get influenced by the samples. Yes. I get influenced by the patches. Anybody who's a, any a, I, any composer out there that has a DAW and a whole thing of patches, you know what I'm talking about. You bring something up, I don't like that sound, I don't like that sound, this sound sounds like crap, and then you bring this up and you go, whoa. All of a sudden you play a little bit and you're, I'm influenced. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool. Hey, I can do this. So you never know that AI doesn't grant you that opportunity to maybe tickle that part of your creativity. And done. <laughs> yeah, no, that was fantastic. No, none of us are pioneers, maybe except for Jacob Collier. None of us are, are creating brand new stuff. Even Jacob is influenced by so much other stuff. But we sure. all are standing on the shoulder of giants. And uh, we're influenced by things. And... To have, I mean, do, do lyricists use uh, uh, synonym dictionaries? Uh, do they use, you know, rhyming dictionaries? Is that do we not know? shaping your creative direction? Because you're, oh, I didn't think yeah. about that word or that name. So this is just another tool that can be used for us to to think about a different direction. I would not have thought about that chord progression or that's a unique lyric, et cetera. And so use the tools to help you, not to, to scare you away. Um, now, people say, well... That's not human creation. It's a tool. It's a hammer. It's a saw. It's a screwdriver, whatever. Um, I'm still driving the bus and taking the outputs of these tools. I'm putting stuff in. I'm getting stuff out. I'm using it, creating creating new music. Um, you know, one of the things that, that kind of shocked me in some of the comments was people saying, Suno makes me want to quit music. Um, Suno makes me hate music. And I'm thinking, why? What, what's the psychology? Show me on this doll where the robot hurts you. Um, this is, it's, it's, why would you stop creating? And I almost took offense to it when I first read it. I'm thinking, if, if you're willing to quit music because something out there does it faster or, or, or different or better than you, was it really that important to you in the first place? Maybe you're not the musician. I don't know. So what, I mean, what do you think about that? You know, I have a very soft spot for this. Um, I've spent my whole life as a uh, composer, producer, musician, blah, 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 blah. It's a very competitive world. And um, 
After a while, when you realize you've worked hard enough, uh, you put a dollar value to your work. Like when I charge people money to do the things I did, this recent job I just did, or whatever the case is. Um, when you start thinking about your art form as a point of generation, generating income for you, you and your family, there's a different kind of stress that's put on, on your creativity. I'm going to hedge a bet that for those who are, you know, anxiety out and hurt, because uh, I'm an empath too, so I feel that comment. I really do. Um, I think I'm gonna. I, I think that's coming from a place where uh, potentially anybody who leaves that comment feels threatened, not on the creative world uh, aspect, but more of the financial aspect, that, that mm. this is going to intrude on a dream that I had to write songs or write music so I can make a living out of it. And, and then define that as, as that composer or that musician may see fit, whether it's they want to be famous singer or something or famous musician or something like that. I kind of feel the same way when I listen to these musicians that I just go, oh, I just want to turn my guitar into a coffee table now. I don't even want to pick up my guitar after listening yeah. to musicians that are just so mind numbing. I say, why am I even doing this? I only know four chords. But then you, know, then you get past that. You, you, you get past the shock. I mentioned something like that. I've been around the greatest saxophone players in the world. And if I decided to quit because they were so good, I would have quit decades ago. So yeah, at first I'm like, man, just close the case, put it away. But then an hour later, I'm like, no, I, I got to go practice. They motivate me. Get past the initial, damn, they're, why am I bothering? And then you were like, wow, they practice. They hustled. They're gifted. I got to do the same thing. So you see what the parallel is. It's almost identical. It's almost like, well, I, uh, AI seems to be sucking the creativity out of me or make me want to turn my, my guitar into a coffee table. And you, you have to go through this Heimlich maneuver, truthfully, as a creative individual, where it's like you're going to have these, especially if you're young, you have many more generations to live. You know, I'm at the, I'm at the other end of the rainbow. I'm just kind of cashing in my chips, and I'm still get to be here for as long as the universe allows me to, to teach and speak with folks like you and just have a really good time and try to put out the, you know, really carve in the silver lining around a lot of, you know, darkness that's out there when it comes to, you know, uh, this conversation. But the younger composers and stuff are going to have to flex multiple times through their career. So if you're 22, 32 years old, you got another 40 years. You, you First of all, the truth be told, composers, are, you, you, you can never stop writing music because it lives in here and it lives in here. And if you're a musician, it lives in practicing and it lives in all that. It lives in you. The, the challenge is, is when you've taken that and say, well, now I want to make a living at it then then there is a different kind of stress that you put yourself into. I did that with my surfing. Surfing was always number one. It's still number one. As a matter of fact, most of my friends will tell you that the reason I wasn't more successful or could have been as a composer was because I screw it, I'm going surfing. I'm not gonna go to this party because I'm gonna go to, you know, the mental wise and surf for two weeks. I didn't care. But the thing is, is that um, w my mistake was in the early 80s, this is one of my very first lessons about taking what you love and trying to make. I wanted to go pro surfing. It would have been a great dream to be a pro surfer, go around the world and be famous and, you know, the cute little girls and the whole thing, you know, and I tried. And as soon as I realized that, oh, no, I've only got 20 minutes to catch X amount of waves. And now my friends that I'm paddling out with are not my friends right now for 20 minutes. They're my competitors. Right. And I've got to change who I am and I've got to go for it. And then all of a sudden I found that I tried maybe for about six months, you know, amateur contests and stuff. I had one pro contest, failed miserably. But I realized that as soon as I put that on top of it, you know, I personally with my personality didn't have... Um, the skill set, let's say, to take that pressure and still continue to be really good surfer and then take it down the professional surfing world. I decided to go, you know what? I'm just a surfer. I love yeah. surfing. I'm good at free surfing, you know, meaning like not around media and I just want to pull in barrels and I just want to do all of what I was doing. Same thing with music. You know, the, the music thing is, is like, I want, I, I love music. I write music. You're going to put that now yourself under pressure to make money. It's going to be a whole different energy that you put inside your creative self. So I believe that when anybody is really super concerned about AI is 
They, they might just have to rebalance that and just, you, you have to remember that no matter what, AI cannot take away from you your creativity. They cannot take from you, even if you only know four songs or, I mean, four chords or eight chords, or you like just long, lush pads with little lo-fi backgrounds. It doesn't matter. It, it, AI cannot take that from you. AI can I'm only... trying to make with lots of folks. So like one of the comments I got, I'm going to actually read it. Um, it's not necessarily the financial impact, but the value attached to the act of creation itself. If a machine can produce in a few minutes something that would have taken a human hours or days to create, and both were just the same in the eyes of the world, why would anyone spend those hours or days making that music or that art? So that's the devaluation of the gift that music creation is, or creativity is in general. I always wanted to be a musician. I knew since I was little, it was never a question. I can't not create. I will create till the day I die. So to, to think that a technology could minimize that is it, still hard for me to fathom. Why would anyone spend the hours or days creating? If they're even questioning it, maybe they weren't meant to be that way. I, like I said, I can't not create. I, I think, write music I think every it, day. I think if we're going to focus just on that one comment, that, that, that particular individual just needs to step back a little bit, take a deeper breath, and... You know, I, ha I, have a I have a neighbor, this is all fresh, not now a stream of consciousness just popped okay, in. Okay, go for it. Keep I have a neighbor that has a, a, a kiln and a, a little wheel to make all kinds of clay stuff. She's pretty good. She doesn't sell any of it. She puts it around her house. Yeah. But she'll spend all day doing this and doing that, and she has her little kiln and stuff, and she paints it. Yeah. And when she walks out of her front door, she goes, oh, George, take a look at the new um, octopus I just made and stuff like yeah. that. And I can see in her face the glow of creativity. She's not selling anything. She's not doing anything. But yet she's still taking the time to go through the connection between the clay and the hand and the creativity. For me... It's so funny because the subject matter is I have been very dormant with creativity because just as what I've done as a composer, thousands and thousands of tracks for libraries and everything. I'm like, <sighs> then I realized on this journey that I'm on with my Twitch channel and these people are throwing so many different kinds of music that I had no idea existed. It reinvigorated me to go, wait a second, I can pull back and I can do a little bit of this and I just, and and I'll play just this, and I'll do a little bit of this, not worry about the complexity of it, because I'm not writing music for other composers to go, dude, man, I loved how you resolved that ninth, you know, in that chord to that minor, you know, the, 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 ain't me. Right. And I realized that listening to the music, some of it was what, something called Vocaloid or something, because I, I listened to a lot of video games or anime music. And it kind of reinvigorated me so much so that actually two nights ago, I just turned up my DAW and I just, I don't care, I grabbed the loop a drum loop because I like to write. And I'll say, oh, that's a nice one. And then what I do is that after that loop is done and I've written what I've got, I go back in and I'll program the drums drums because I love to do it. And then I pick up my bass and I play. And then I've got some saxophone stuff from Native Instruments, some good riffy stuff I throw in there. And the truth be told, that technology is helping me write faster than I did 25 years ago when I didn't have that technology. And at the end of the day, I'm feeling good just about writing the music. The process of it is something that we individually have to embrace. Because if, if you feel that, well, the value, AI value versus human value, there, there's a great conversation to have there, but it's also a very personal conversation. Because I'll bet you even that person's a really good composer or is in the, is in the midst of growing and budding as a composer. And sometimes you do feel like, it, you know, it took me, I mean, for myself, my God, I cannot shred to save my life. I've been playing guitars my, my whole life. But as far as the incredible shredding and speed and swipes and the math rock stuff, and I get blown away when I see these kids, I realize, I'm going to sit back and watch them and just glow for their success. Like, I'm so happy that that's where music is going. But for the new composer who might be a little concerned about AI, my personal feeling is AI is just a new genre in a multiple genre that exists in the music world. And those who will go there and play in that sand sandbox and generate, fine. Go ahead, enjoy. Those like myself, like yourself, like many probably composers and, and arrangers and musicians that listen to your, you know, on your channel, 
the process of picking up the guitar and working those chords out or the piano or the solo out on the saxophone or whatever the case is, is what we loved in the first place before we thought of maybe doing something else with it beyond that. <coughs> so I don't, I understand what that individual says about value, but I think it's, it's, a, it's a very personal conversation. Yeah. You, you know, know, it's not it's not an overall conversation. It's a very personal conversation that that individual needs to rehash with that with him or herself. One of the things I one of the themes that I, I tend to sense is the issue of fairness from the point of it's not fair that AI can generate a blues vocal. When it took me 20 years to develop that skill and that tone and that style, it's not fair that this thing can create neoclassical piano quartets or shredding metal guitars because it takes me so much longer. And it, it, it and my music is based on the human experience and my emotions and, and, and interaction with others. And it's just not fair. And to quote my dad, son, the world's not fair. Don't ever expect it to be. And that was, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Um, so I, I see, I think there is a softness out there. I think a lot of the complaining out there is from folks that aren't truly impacted by this whole thing. They just want to jump on an emotional bandwagon um, and, 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 and they want head bobbing. They want to be in, in a like minded crowd. Um, I think it's important. It's just kind of a sidebar, but I think it's important to point out that, that, that there's two music populations um, that are dealing with this. There's us, we creatives that create music for television film games etc um we are composers we are artisans creating a product for a supervisor or editor to place into a show and be used under dialogue or as a scene opener or whatever um and, and there is an impact to this industry the push button create that 30 second you know arpeggiated thing in d minor hard stop 29 and a half seconds whatever we'll get there and and so there there's the threat of losing work. It'll AI will be the next plugin for Contact or Logic or Pro Tools or whatever. Um, so there's it already a, is. Oh, you know, if you talk about like mastering and stuff. Well, oh yeah, I just got I just got RX eleven and oh my goodness, it's amazing. Um, but um, we are such a niche market in the music population, composers for TV and film. Now there's artists, people that want to be on stage. They want to be discovered. They want to have a solo career. I think you said it earlier, AI is not going to replace them. There's always Never. going to be the need for the human interaction, the human experience. So if you're an artist and you're saying that AI is going to steal your gigs, I think you're just mistaken. And that's an emotional argument. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, this once again, this is that natural kind of, sh you know, shock, um, shocking your system with the, with technology doing what AI is doing as similar as we talked about in our last podcast which was when MIDI showed up and then the 1040 ST showed up and then uh, wow recording actually to computers showed up and then you know uh, this this more, the more technology advances meant more people got into it you know and on and on and on and on and on and on uh, the campfire complex, which I talked about earlier, was something I wrote a paper about 15 years ago of what I thought was going to happen, and it's going to probably still happen. I'm not being prophetic, but just as an old fart sitting in a, you know, on the beach with my coconut uh, thinking bubbles. <laughs> um, it's this, this lunge into what's happening with AI across the board when it comes to the media, when it comes to the arts, you know, YouTube, Spotify, all that, is going to push back people from engaging on let's say Spotify and YouTube because what do you trust who's who's the audience yeah what advertisers are going to buy against uh, AI generated stuff if it's not the targeted audience you know what I'm saying there's so many different components that will go there that right now YouTube and Spotify don't have a problem with AI anything right now because they're trying to figure out how are they going to mitigate you know their own financial challenges with what's about to happen with the saturation of or the stealing of, or all that sort of stuff. There's just like right now, you seriously uh, kicked the hornet's nest, or AI kicked the hornet's nest for all the platforms. Yeah. So they got their own thing to worry about. But for us, what we have is our guitars, and we have our bass, and we have our keyboards, and we have this little mic, and we have something like this that we can sing in, and still be creative, powerful artists in with our own voices. No pun, not only as vocalists, but as our creative uh, creation, creative outputs. 
But at the end of the day, people still want to see people perform it. We're not in an anime world yet, even though anime is tremendously huge and all that. We're in a people world. We're in a, you know, we're, we, we want to still connect, even though it's through the internet, you know, t you can hear the nuances of a voice and a breath and a fret noise on the string and all these things, that, you know, intimate recordings and stuff that people put time and energy into. Um, I still think forever and a day, and this is way before even the industry kind of shifted after LimeWire and Napster and all that sort of stuff. The, the musicians that are working are still playing live. Yeah, it's, it's, it's different. There's the number of people that truly care about music from an analytical perspective, from a listening perspective. I think that number continues to shrink. You know, Rick Beato said recently, people aren't going to care how the music's made. They're just, they're just going to want to know if they like it or not. They're not going to like it yeah. based on how it was created. How does it make them feel? Again, as creatives, we're in a niche of a niche. Most people throw music on to, to, to relax, to be distracted, to, to, to escape. They're putting on when they're studying, they're putting on in the doctor's office or, their, or whatever, when they're cleaning the house. Um, and they, 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 sometimes they associate certain songs with amazing or bad memories of their lives. But for the most part, in my opinion, the overwhelming majority of the world simply doesn't care that much about music. Uh, they enjoy it, um, but they That's don't fair. really care how it's made. And so... Um, I think sometimes we get all worked up as creatives and a little more so. And when you look at the big picture, no one's really listening to us in, in, in the first place. So it works. Right. This is our conversation. All this blowing up, though. That's when I said earlier about this is an internal conversation did, that yeah. a bunch of, you know, let's say there's 10 million creators out there that are musically, you know, confused about what's happening with AI. And I'm talking around the world, different yeah. languages and stuff. We're all going, oh, shit, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? How is this happening? In general, the rest of the world... This is a bitter pill for a lot of artists to swallow is that the, art, the, 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 the fan base at large, they don't care. They don't know what goes into the process unless you go see a documentary on how you know, they made that album. They yeah. just know that they turn this on and they feel a certain way. And I don't think AI is going to rob um, professional composers, writers, arrangers, musicians, or those who are budding and growing to be that. I don't think it's going to rob these people of that opportunity to still glow. I think what's going to happen is a new shift is going to happen. We're going to get pounded by AI stuff and everyone's going to back off for a while. And then they're going to, it's going to be a natural pull. I think you said in a, in a video I watched of yours earlier, the pendulum aspect of it, you know, and there is that because I remember the conversation we talked about in the last uh, podcast about when the, the, when the synthesizer showed up and then the, the local 47 in Los Angeles, because my dad and uncle were all part of the union stuff, there was this conversation they would have of like, oh my God, we're going to lose work as drummers, bass players, and stuff that used to be the ones called in to do all this, you know, the A team, the B teams of musicians in Los Angeles that we called in to play drums on these sessions and stuff. Truth be told, yes, a small segment of that got lost. But then they always still kept working. It just got a little less, a little less, and then they changed and they transitioned into something else. Yeah. Still staying musicians, but they transitioned with, okay, well, this is change. We got to do change, you know? But uh, once again, I think where this conversation really has its roots uh, in the anxiety of the conversation that we have as a creative um, body of, of spiritual <laughs> creators, humans that we are, it's it we're kind of we do we're kind of getting rope doped in the corner a little bit you know we're trying to we're, we're getting some punches we're having to duck and stuff but i i don't see it having the longer impact that we're done right and getting back to you know, you know, I, I don't, the, the concept of quitting i've got another comment that, um on the, on the good side just because ai is being used to assist with and in some cases outright generate images and music does not all caps mean that you can't still pick up an instrument or a paintbrush or a camera or whatever your artistic medium is quit crying and keep creating in spite of the technology either embrace it and adapt or tune it out and carry on i think that's great yeah i, I mean once again we have you know a cacophony of opinions and a um, plethora dare i say a plethora that i said cacophony yes a plethora and um you know, at, at the end of the day, what that comment is echoes what I said earlier, and I believe you've said it before. You started playing music because of your own awesome desire to put your hands 
on the keyboard and make beautiful notes that formed a chord that eventually you got better at your vocals and you tried and you had that thing you go oh i have a vibrato let me try to i love to sing i love to pick up my guitar and play riffs over youtube videos i love to do that just go back to those roots everybody who's tripping on ai stuff just go back to those roots marinate in those roots again yeah and just watch sit back and let's watch ai let's watch and see what happens and we do have to i think i even said this on my last podcast we do have to kind of heed um him and ha and 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 who moved my cheese and acknowledge things change you know but how do we how do we embrace it how do we you know it's just like me what i had said earlier so i look around and i go well i think this might be a great teaching tool for teachers to put in nursery rhymes of their own that they write and it spits out something that they can use to teach it's not about selling the music or the lyricist who has a stack of lyrics and has never had the opportunity so they fudge around with it and at least they could sit at their own home and come out and and dictate 50 different times until they get it right a song that has their lyrics and they can go hey i wrote these lyrics you know there's just as dawes as they got cheaper lowered the barrier to entry of people to get better in music ai is doing the same thing for people who are beyond the creative uh, bell bell curve of just wanting to have fun using music to do things that don't mean anything about money but just a satisfactory thing of like i just wrote a nursery rhyme for my kids it's funny creation. with their names yeah. yeah exactly it's like they now have the opportunity it's almost like 30 years ago, a lot of the people who were on DAWs now did not have the opportunity to do what I did because I had to do pencil and paper. You had, you know, hire musicians, studio time, all this sort of stuff. DAWs show up, now everybody now has a better opportunity to be a creator, right? So now AI shows up and what that did is that spread that way beyond musicians where now people can use it for, for creative things that, that can benefit. You know, that teacher that does write something, a specific plan of class, let's say for their second graders, and they do it and then they talk about their little area where they live and he writes a little nursery rhyme, like I said, about if it's in Alaska, about a salmon and a bear who become best friends, even though the bear eats the salmon, there's times where they can be good friends too, and blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden they write this cute little song and now that's used as a tool to help teach. Yep. So I think, I'm thinking outside of that like going okay i get it I, that, I, I that, that, ties on, to, but... that ties to one of the other comments i got that i thought was beautiful um and this this kind of relates to the ceo of suno i saw an interview with him last month he kind of created this thing he's a mit harvard brilliant business grad bass player in a band and he thought it'd be cool to create this stuff always so the bass player your... yeah it's always the bass players um <laughs> they thought it'd be cool to get together it was a campfire thing. It'd be cool to get together and have some fun with your friends and, hey, let's write a crazy song about my, my dog eating my homework or whatever and type the prompt in and see what happens and get a good laugh about it. But there's also the, the disability aspect. I got a comment from a guy that says, AI for me is freedom of being able to create as I have a learning disability and then I've learned how to play an instrument properly. But with this AI thing, now I can create until my heart's content. I write all my own lyrics to hear my ideas put to music. And to hear it, my ideas put the music is something I never dreamed of beyond my wildest dreams. Um, so this person has my musical skill. We all have friends like that. They can't carry a tune. They can't carry a pitch. But this guy is, has a learning disability, but he has words in his head. And he wants them to be songs so badly. And now he can type those lyrics into a tool and say, I want a country song. I want a blues song. I want a whatever. And bam, there I get goosebumps thinking about the joy that that guy yeah. probably experiences of being able to... I And now... To say he's a musician, it would be a stretch. But to say he's a creator is exactly spot on. And I think that's a fantastic application of, of, of AI. That, that is such a wonderful comment. To me, that's what I live for, uh, to hear things like that. And, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I defy almost any composer or songwriter out there that doesn't have a song that they wrote for themselves. Yeah. That's very healing. They didn't bother releasing it, but it means something to them because, you know, whatever personal reason. And it's part of their soundtrack of life. Yeah. And so in the same in the same power of what that is, if somebody who has disabilities of any sorts and they can manage to do that, um, can't carry you to and all the things that you said. I'm so excited and I'm elated that AI music is giving them that opportunity. And that in itself does not encroach on the 
any, anything that I just said, whether it be it the, the, the nursery rhyme kids thing, the lyricist, or like you in this comment, this individual who's disabled, none of that encroaches on the business model of the composers that are concerned about AI taking work away from them. And that's the angle that I like to look at with this possibility is what does AI music, AI creativity get to do for people who will never have the money to hire any of this. I know uh, this, this is a touchy subject. I'm just saying on the more personal visceral, not to create the stuff, take it and sell it, but to be able to sit there and say, I wrote a song about the passing of my, my mom here and it's just for me. And yeah. I found on AI, I prompted beautiful voice, female voice with acoustic guitars and fretless bass and a nice little swing, whatever. And now you just have this song that reminds me of your mother and uh, reminds you of your mother and she passed away and you put a little music video together of the slides and you have a piece of, of something that, 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 that means something to you and you did create that with the prompts. Yeah, I know that you didn't play any of that, but who are we to judge that individual for that? I, that's where I find the, the potential of these AI tools being beneficial in the non-commercial way for individuals who have never had the chance, never thought they could do anything like that, just go, hey, Nito, look what I did. Yeah. Kids, I wrote a song after you spilt the cappuccino and said what you said, look, I wrote a funny little song. And <coughs> on the other hand, that song could blow up on TikTok or something, but that's not, that's not something that, a, a lot of times, that's nothing that could be professionally manifested either. All these things that blow up on TikTok uh, aren't specifically created for TikTok. A lot of them have been rip off bites and bits of existing tracks, yada, yada, yada. Anyhow, whole different story. But yeah, I, I think that individual is a super win uh, story for, uh, for sure. the use of, you know. It's, it's the benefit of technology. Now, I'm not going to go as far as diving into Elon Musk neural net and putting things in my brain. And yeah. that's that's a whole separate <laughs> world of potential. But at the end of the day, the AI music creation tools are tools. They're not our evil overlords going to replace us. You're not going to lose your live mm -hmm. gigs. Will there be a desire for humans to be with other humans? Whether I want to be on stage with you jamming out and making other folks happy, or if I want to be in a room jamming with you and just making ourselves happy. Um, I, I, I want that experience. Other folks want to go to concerts. You got folks that follow the dead to hundreds of concerts. You got folks that go to opera and go to live venues, etc. There will always be the need for n nostalgia and, and human interaction and physical touch and dancing and and and, and genuine interaction with others. AI is not going to replace that. And hopefully, AI will be used by some to help them create more music that those that appreciate it and love it can hear and get access to, which means more gigs, more venues, more festivals, more opportunity, and kumbaya, we all smile on the rainbow at the end of the day. Or we could just sound like a couple of old farts that are out of touch. So, I mean, you know, at the end of get the day- Get off my lawn! Yeah, exactly. At, at the end of the day, as, as you and I have the opportunity to reminisce and talk, you know, in, 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 a, in a pattern of wisdom and understanding, it's because of, you know, our ages and stuff like that. We've heard it. younger people might listen to this and be going, ah, you know, whatever, you know, that's not what it is. I mean, some people are going to say, are you kidding me? We're going to go into a zero um, venue scenario and this is never going to be like this. And we're all going to be walking around like, uh, like they did in uh, like any Star Wars movie where everyone's kind of like really not, you know, really connected to anything when it comes to entertainment or stuff. At the end of the day, our opinion, we're having a, the same kind of conversation as a lot of other composers are, but um, just I think the angle that is the reason why you, you had me come on again is that the, I, I, is, is the, there is a positive aspect of it, and that's what I was glad I was able to share with you is what I had said earlier, is that, um, like I said about that marketing thing, you have to kind of look at what, if you're in the competitive world of writing music, what is this going to do? How do I adjust myself to be better than that or prepared for different kinds of jobs? You know, because don't forget too, this is kind of a um, lower fruit, if you would, uh, environment, uh, the stock music library world and all that. I'm not saying lower fruit as in lower talent. I'm talking about the lesser of the paid gigs of professional composers here. Yes, you can get paid to also um, produce music for music libraries. I, I'm not poo-pooing. Me, I'm, fuck, I've made my whole life on music libraries. I just 
came from old school when they used to pay you a grip per track. Now I barely, you know, I, I barely get a fifth of what I used to get, what, 25, 30 years ago, except yeah. now I have a relationship with this composer that I can write with picking my nose with one hand and holding down a you know, key with the other hand and do a couple things and we're good to go. But um, still keeping an eye on what the market's doing, the, the, the stock music industry is going to be challenged by this, but now that just means that everybody who's in stock music industry just levels up with their skill set. Because remember, AI only trains on what's existing. Yeah. And all of you out there who are composers and producers have yet to create your best work that AI doesn't know exists because it's still in you. And if you give up and you quit, that'll never get out. And then we'll be stuck with crap AI music. You know, so I think to me, the real big call to action with what is happening is AI music is like, it can only do what it knows to do based on what's out there. And the creativity that you have as a composer that's still in here, if you give up because you feel that this is like this, then AI wins. If you yes. don't give up and you continue to create, AI loses. Absolutely. You know, that's just, but, but that's just, that's more like composer to po composer, old fart talking to young composers that might be listening. That's, that's my my what I used to what I call Obi-Wan Kajibski <laughs> moment you know what I mean that's that's my that's my Jedi music you know moment in in in, in motivating them and anybody who might be feeling like no uh, no 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 it can only do what's out there and knows you, there's tons of magic in each one of those people out there don't give up this is the I just way care, sorry this is the way no it's yeah I got passionate when I get passionate I'm sorry the the words will come out you know and uh, but I mean, truth be told, I'm, I'm passionate about it and I believe that I believe that with everything uh, that I every, every fiber of my being, you know, so. Yeah, I just want I, I, I looking forward to when we get past the hype cycle of AI music and folks just chill the hell out, realizing that it's not destroying their world. It's not taking their jobs away. It's a tool. It's a new tech. And there'll be something new in 10 years that we're all angry about again. I mean, did AI <laughs> graphics take away actors' jobs? No, you know, no, we're, we're going to be fine. We're all going to be fine. Everything's okay. It's okay. It's okay. As uh, Birdie the singer, I think that was her name, that girl on American Idol, she had cancer and she died a year later. I think her song was right. called It's Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. And um, we're going to be fine. There's the silver lining. And like I said earlier, I think if the naysayers are correct and the world is flooded if we all need to jump in an arc of some kind because the world's being flooded with horrible music it'll just create the demand for more good music which is great for music listeners and music creators and music performers and we're all gonna be fine in the end yeah i agree i awesome. i think that's it we're just you know you like i said earlier you and i are a couple of uh old composer gentlemen who are you know uh we, we we've already had to battle a few generations of changes yep. and uh, we saw what the other side of that looks like. And of course there is some collateral damage that happens from each shift in technology, but you know, still behind you, everything that you have behind you is an organic instrument yep. that you get to pick up whenever you're done with the zoom and you decide to kick something up on, on YouTube and play some saxophone to some great music. You know, that is where your heart and your soul lies in the first place and there is nothing ai about any one of those things behind you that's all you know the essence of who we are as artists so ai should not yeah. take away your desire to create not it will never stop you from picking up a guitar and fumbling or a keyboard or singing or whistling whatever uh it's just not going to happen don't let that happen to yeah. you well james man i appreciate the time um looking forward to our next conversation uh but thank you so much mahalo yeah, no problem. And next time we, you know, how do we stop this AI thing from next time we get another conversation? We won't talk about AI. There we go. We'll talk about something else. <laughs> we won't, we won't pound that, 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 that hornet's nest anymore. I think that's also part of it too, is that, you know, there's a lot of conversation about it and stuff. And I think it's current, uh, it's relevant, balance it's important, of it. it's impacting folks. We have to talk about yeah. it. We can't ignore it, but there will be other I stuff. I think it's a good balance of it. I think, you know, the people who are the, you know, woe is me, you know, the him and the haws. Yes. It's That's a right. balance that, that we're Spirit participating Smith, in. Hem and haw. We're talking right. about the book, Who Moved My Cheese? It's a great book on life. So go You got to get it. You got to put that link down below or whatever if, uh, you, for, for people. It's, it's, I think every fifth grader should read that. I think that'll make such a difference on the long journey. Absolutely, guys. Well, thanks, everyone, for watching. We, we went for a long time. I'll probably edit this a little bit, but maybe not. I always say that, and I never do because I like the authenticity. <laughs> you just go screw it, upload. Yeah, done. Yo, wait, here we go. 
All right, Jeeves. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you next time. No problem. Take care. All right. All right. <laughs>